welcome to your virtual field trip at the TJC Earth and Space Science Center. Please come in and make your way to the planetarium. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the TJC Earth and Space Science Center in our virtual planetarium. My name is Dr. Bo Hartweg. I'm the director of the Earth and Space Science Center, and I'm happy to have you with us on your virtual field trip today. So I know this may be an unusual setting, but um, we're gonna we're gonna give this a try and we're hoping to create several different lessons and activities to give you uh, some planetarium content while you may not be able to visit the planetarium right now. So today's lesson is going to be focused on the moon. Now, before we begin, I wanna orient you to a few things in our planetarium. As you can see, we have our sun nice and high in the sky. Right here in the middle of a field, that's to get us away from the city so we can have some great viewings of the night sky. There's also a couple other features I wanna bring up for us right now. I'm gonna bring up our date and time because one of the cool things about the planetarium is that it's a time machine. We can travel forward in time, backwards in time, we can make time move faster, we can make time move slower. And this gives us a chance to really explore the universe. But having a date and time, helps keep us grounded in knowing when we are in, in space and time. All right guys, so one of the first things I wanna do is go ahead and we're gonna fast forward time. So on the count of three, one, two, three, faster. You'll notice the seconds are moving a little bit faster over here, but we can make the planetarium move even faster than that. So on the count of three, one, two, three, faster. All right. Now, each second is a minute inside of our planetarium, and you may be able to notice something that's starting to happen as time moves faster. That's right, you may have noticed that the sun appears to be moving in the sky. Now, of course, we know that the sun isn't actually moving um, in the sky, but really it is the Earth turning or rotating. A long time ago, people used to think that the stars, the sun, the moon, the planets, that they all revolved around the Earth. Of course, we know that the Earth is rotating, and that's what gives us that apparent motion of things moving in the sky. Now, let's see. We can take a look. Let's go even one more step faster on the count of three. One, two, three. There we go. There's the sun. Oh, you may even see that Venus is up in the sky right now. You can't see it much during the daytime, but once the sun sets, we may be able to take a look at it. Let's follow the sun. Now the sun, of course, looks like it rises in the east and sets in the west. That's because the earth is actually rotating or turning to the east. And as it does, it looks like things move in the opposite direction. You can practice this at home. If you take your thumb, hold it out in front of you, and you turn your head to your right or left, it looks like your thumb moves the opposite direction from your face. All right, so like I was saying, as we fast forward time to sunset, We'll be able to see Z Venus in the evening sky, provided that you have clear skies. Can't guarantee that you'll have a clear night. Sometimes clouds happen. But if you have a clear night, why don't you get out and take a look? You may also still be able to see Orion. You see these three stars right here just before sunset. Now, 
as we get further into the year, um, into spring and summer, we won't be able to see Orion as much, but you know, this might be one of your last chances to, to see Orion in the evening sky until we get to the fall or winter seasons again. Now we're gonna go ahead and shift our gaze over to the east and we might be able to see something. It's just starting to rise over here, yeah. Now you see our moon starting to peek out over the horizon. This is gonna be where we spend most of our time during this lesson today is talking about the moon. Now the day when we're recording this is April 8th and you may have remembered that uh, last night, April 7th, people talked about a pink supermoon. Now you may be wondering, what is a pink supermoon? Especially if you got out and you looked outside and said, well, the moon doesn't look too pink. Well, a pink moon is the name that we give the full, the full moon um, in April. And that just so happened to also be a supermoon. Now supermoons, the moon travels on a path around the earth. And I'm gonna bring up that orbital path right now so you can see it. The moon uh, orbits around the earth, but it's not a perfect circle. Sometimes it's closer to the earth, sometimes it's further away from the earth. When it's a full moon and it also happens to be on that closer point to the earth, we call it a super moon. Now the moon will look, appear a little bit brighter. It's hard to tell the difference unless you're a really trained observer between a, a regular full moon and a super moon, but it is a great time to always get out and look at the night sky. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and speed up our time just a little bit more and watch the moon travel in a similar fashion to the sun. It's gonna move from the east to the west across our night sky as the earth is rotating. And we're gonna see that the, sun, the moon stays up most of the night, but oh, we've stayed up all night long. And if we look over here, the sun is starting to rise in our horizon as well over in the east. Okay, now, some of you may know that the moon is not always up at nighttime, it's up during the daytime as well. It's just a lot harder to see during the daytime, so we're gonna fast forward time just a little bit more here and stop it right about there. Now, you can see in our date and time that it is April 9th, 2020. But what if we skipped ahead a whole day? We didn't just stay up in the whole night. Where do you think the moon might be at this time to, on April 10th? So I want you just to point at your screen where you might think it would be. Could be up here, maybe over here, maybe over here, below the horizon. Where do you think it could be? All right, guys, so on the count of three, we are going to move forward an entire day. You ready for this? One, two, three. All right, did you guys make your predictions? How were they? How did you do? Oh, and you may have also noticed that the moon moved from here all the way over to here in the sky. And if you look closely, we're not quite a full moon anymore. You'll notice that the right side of the moon is starting to be a little bit darker. Any guesses as to why? All right, so if you notice the sun still over here, but the moon is starting to move closer into the sun. So let's try and make another prediction where you might think the moon will be on April 11th, the next day. Got your predictions? Three, two, one. Yeah. So the moon appears to be moving closer and closer to our sun as we move ahead each day. And as we do, the moon looks a little bit different in the sky. Now it only appears to be a half moon, you might say. We call this a quarter moon. And specifically, this is the last quarter moon. But as the moon approaches the sun, we start to see less and less of it. All right, now we're almost all the way April 
22 and the moon is almost right in front of the sun. We call this a new moon. And if we speed up time throughout the day, you'll notice that the moon is gonna be up the entire day with the sun. So the moon isn't always in the sky at night, as you may have thought, but sometimes the moon is up during the daytime as well. All right, you see the moon staying up with the sun the whole day. And as the sun sets, the moon will be gone and the moon's gonna be gone that entire night. You notice it sets behind the horizon over here in the west. All right, I'm gonna stop our time. Now I'm gonna do something special here. I am going to take away the ground or the horizon so that we can see that the moon is still there with the sun. I'm also gonna make it dark traveling into space so we can take a little bit closer look at this phenomenon and learn about the phases of the moon. So here we starting when the moon is in between the earth and the sun. We call this the new moon. Okay. Now, as we move forward throughout our days, we'll start to see a little bit more of the moon. We call this a crescent moon. You see it kind of looks like a smiley face or a croissant. We call it a crescent moon. All right. Now, when the moon is positioned right here, we see about half of the moon. We call this the first quarter moon. Now we have a funny word for this when the moon is not quite full, but almost full. This is a gibbous moon. So can you all say gibbous? It's a really funny word, I like it. Um, and we also have a special term. When we're starting to see more and more of the moon, it's called waxing. We say the moon is in a waxing phase. And so this is a waxing gibbous. Now, of course, you all know this phase. This is the full moon. This is when the moon is positioned behind the earth in relationship to the sun. So we have the sun and the earth, and then the moon is all the way behind it. All right, Oops, sorry, I was going backwards in time. Now, we keep moving forwards in time. We see, we start to get what's called a waning phase where we see less and less of the moon. And you'll know you're in a waning phase if the right side of the moon is darker, okay? You'll know you're in a waxing phase if the left side of the moon is darker. So here we're waning, and this is a waning gibbous. We call this the last quarter moon, waning crescent, all the way back to a new moon. All right, now we're gonna zoom in and take a closer look. While we were doing that, did anybody happen to take a guess as, or notice how long that whole process took? All right, so we're gonna do this again, zoomed into the moon so you can get a better look at all of those phases. But while we do, I want you to pay specific attention to these dates. And we're gonna count how many days it takes to go through all of the phases. So let's count with me. We have one, two, three, waxing crescent, four, five, six, seven, first quarter, eight, nine, 10, Waxing gibbous, 11, 12, 13, full moon, 14, 15, 16, 17, waning gibbous, 18, 19, 20, 21, last quarter, 21, 22, 23, waning crescent, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, almost 29 days until we get all the way back around. So about 29 days approximately for the moon to go through all of its phases. And we call that one month. Yeah, that's where we get the term month from is how long it takes the moon to travel all the way around the earth and go through all of its phases. Okay. 
Now, some of you may have been observant and noticed, well, what about when the moon passes in front of the sun? Does that cause an eclipse? And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So the path that the moon travels around the earth isn't quite um, flat, you would say, and so it's a little bit of an angle. And so some days the moon will pass above the sun, some, sometimes it'll pass below the sun, but when it lines up just right in relationship to the earth, we get an eclipse. So I'm gonna turn on a couple of things, guys, so bear with me. I'm gonna put up our ground and our atmosphere. We're also going to return to the present time, April 8th, but I wanna skip ahead to a couple of years. So 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, so guys, on April 8th, 2024, we have a really special event that's gonna happen. And that is a total solar eclipse. That is when the moon is passes in front of the sun and it will cause a shadow to show up on the surface of the earth. All right, so we're gonna fast forward time just a little bit, give you a brief idea of what it might look like. And now during this total solar eclipse, the moon blocks out the sun. You'll notice the sky is getting a little bit darker. Okay, so that's what it would be like to stand in the sun's shadow or the moon's shadow. And you're able to see stars in the middle of the day. Now the really cool thing, oh, looks like we're gonna see maybe some planets as well. Maybe see Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mars. So this will be a really, really special event if you're able to witness it from the path of totality. I recommend that you do. And that's just four years from now, April 8th, 2024. Okay. Cool thing is Tyler, Texas, where the Earth and Space Science Center is located, will be in the path of totality. So stay tuned for more details. Guys, we're gonna bring us right back to where we started April 8th, 2020. And I thank you for joining us for our first virtual field trip to the planetarium. Stay tuned for more.